live. Now, for those of you who wonder what all the word needy really includes, listen to this. See, we're milking this because I want you to be so convinced of who you have on your side. Needy, lacking the necessities of life, very poor. Question, what basic necessities are you lacking in your life? Let me name some. Love, acceptance, approval, affection, appreciation, significance, honor, recognition. I'm going to stop there. Now, some of you in place of all that have gotten used, abused, played, disrespected, molested, cheated, lied on, Mm, 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 mm. <sighs> now, I'm only naming a few, believe it or not. But here's the thing. All that the devil has worked against you all throughout your life from the time you were a child, God will reverse the curse. There's something that rises up inside of him for poor and needy people. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Oh. Okay, let me go to the Beatitudes. I have no idea who this is for, but I am really, really um, trying to stay as emotionless as possible, and it's very difficult for me right now. Okay, let's see. Matthew chapter 5. Mm -mm -mm. Wow, we're going to read from the Beatitudes. I want you to see it from Jesus' standpoint. So you'll get a clearer picture of God and his heart. Wow. Now, starting at verse 1, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain, into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Stay pure in heart, you guys. No matter where you find yourself, top or the bottom of the barrel, whatever. Top of the game, bottom of the barrel, stay pure. Stay real. Stay real. For they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of God. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, now I'm going back to the start. Verse 3. 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, it's kind of like saying, you're poor in spirit, you're kind of downtrodden, you're needy, you lack a lot of things that, that you may think normal people have automatically, or you got a whole lot of shortcomings and a lot of weakness. You're blessed. And you say, well, why are you going to call me blessed? Because God's got his eyes on you. God's got plans for you. God's getting ready to reverse the curse. But you got to place yourself in his hands. You got to place all your dilemmas and all of that, all your dilemmas in his hand, in his care, casting all your care on him, for he cares for you. Mm. Listen. Part of the problem with most of us on this planet is we have no clue how much God loves us. That's the travesty of it all. Once you know how much God loves you, no demon in hell can convince you otherwise. You may have doubts about what happened in the Bible and what it says about this, that, and the other, and did that really happen? But you will never doubt God's love. And if you don't got, doubt God's love, you will not doubt that he'll be there for you. Once you actually have experienced his love, because his love communicates. You, I know you've heard the word download. Well, there's a download that takes place when God infuses you with his love, with his supernatural, out of this world, galactic love. When you experience that love and you need to ask him for it every day to give you the experience of feeling his love for you. When you get that from God, what ends up happening is the download takes place and you start to see his faithfulness. You see his compassion, his level of understanding. You see his tenderness in spite of his majesty. You see his patience in spite of his holiness. When you get a little glimpse of that love, and it's little compared to what you're going to experience when you get in his face, let me tell you, babe, it'll be a lot easier for you to believe that God's there for you. He's not there for you. You know how some people say, I got your back, I got your back. Yeah, they standing behind you while the, while the bullets are hitting you. God's the kind that will stand before you and let the bullets hit him. You don't get his love because you haven't felt it yet. I pray that God enables you to feel his love for you. That will be the foundation of your life like it is mine. I have failed God royally. I have disobeyed God. I have ignored God. I have been unfaithful to God. But God has never done that to me. Never. He's not a tit for tat God. And once you understand that, that will compel you that much more never to betray him, if at all humanly possible. You will fight tooth and nail never to betray him because you will finally recognize who is really on your side. What a friend you really have in Jesus. I pray that you are encouraged. I pray that you will not take your life lightly, that you will not take your relationship with him lightly, that you will not uh, take his promises lightly. Don't take them with a grain of salt. Don't do that. Don't treat him 
by the way people have treated you. That's not fair. He sent his son to shed his blood on the cross for all of the things we need right here on earth. Yes, you know he died on the cross to forgive us for sin. We know that. But there is so much more to that cross. So much more to the scars he took on, our, on his back. For you and me. For those of us who laughed at the church. Who mocked the things of God. Who may still be mocking some of them. Who may be angry with him and turn our back on him. But he's, th those scars were still for you. His death was for you. His resurrection, on the other hand, was definitely for you. So my point in saying all that is the power comes through his resurrection. Everything we need for the powerless. He's got the power for the powerless. He's got the love for the loveless. He's got the peace for those in turmoil. Do you get what I'm saying? He's got healing for the scarred. He's got freedom for the imprisoned and the bound. He's got deliverance for the hangups and those that are caught up, tied up, tangled up in mess. He's got freedom for those who are emotionally in knots. He can untie those knots. He doesn't even have to untie them. He just touches and whew, the knots just melt away. Mm. The chains just disappear. The, the, the mind, the mental blocks go away. Your life can be so full, so amazing, even in the troubled times. Yes, we are human. Yes, we react. Yes, we cry. Yes, we get angry. Yes, we get frustrated. But there's a peace that passes all understanding. And it's always steady quiet and sure when we're going through our emotions may be bouncing off the wall but deep down inside there is a stream <laughs> ah. okay I'm going to stop because my mind starts pulling up all kind of scripture and I'll be talking for another two or three hours I hope that encourages you when you are going through, when you are, you have issues that you have to deal with, when your hands are dirty, when you're feeling guilty, when you are discouraged, when you are afraid, when you have been lied on and you're paying a price for something you didn't even do. Take all of that to God. Take every bit of it. Fuss your heart out, cry your heart out, yell your heart out, but do it with God. And after you get through dumping, ask God to fill you with his peace, fill you with his joy, and settle you down through his word and his precious promises. And you lean on his bosom and find solace 